so what is up youtube welcome back to the channel once again you know i appreciate having you here welcome back on this glorious day i'm out on a first impressions review and this video is all about this little thing here the honda cb300r Right, so I've been on this bike for about 10 minutes now and uh, I can give you a few off the bat remarks of what I think about it but before I get into that you need to know a little bit about myself my weight and my height that sort of thing so you can get an idea of where I'm coming from remember these are just my opinions on the bike they're not set in stone you can go out there and test ride anything and make your own opinions about a bike these are based on my experiences my body weight and my size so let's kick off with i'm six foot two i'm 16 stone or just over and uh i'm quite wide i mean i'm not like a brick but i'm quite wide in the shoulder and i have a very long thigh bone so that makes me sound like i look really weird in the flesh but i don't i look like a normal human being i'm just pointing out a few things anyway <laughs> let's get on with this bike because it's all about this it's not about me if you want to know any specs about this bike or any information i shall drop doble's website in the section below and also honda's website on this bike in the section below so you can check out all the specs there this is not the type of review where i walk around and tell you uh, what the size of nuts and bolts are no it's just my impression of what i think of the bike what's up dude <laughs> i've no idea who that was they just uh bibbed at me so i'm going to claim that they knew me makes me feel good you see right now first impression straight off the bat this bike's small this bike is really small now i'm comparing this to the cb500f this is what i'm comparing it to because honda have brought out two bikes within the i think it's the a2 category license so if you're going to go for this you will also consider the 500f so they're kind of competing against each other this i would say feels smaller it feels more compact i don't mean smaller as in a less substantial bike i mean smaller as in it's more hunched you're more over the front i mean look in here i can't even see the front wheel i can only see to here it's like the front end is completely missing but not in a bad way it's just uh i suppose because i'm used to bikes where they've got fairings on and i've got off-road bikes so you can see the mud guard sticking out and things like that it's kind of like a, a big grom it's a grown-up grom they should have called this the 300 Grom because it kind of reminds me of that. Obviously the Grom's a lot smaller, but the compactness of it, the riding position, the sort of like fun nature of it, where you can just chuck it. But yeah, it's small, but not in a bad way. It's a good small. Good things come in small packages. And what this does, it makes it light and it makes it quite maneuverable. It feels very low slung with the weight. So when you flick it from side to side, just doing that, it's really, really easy. Now I'm not saying that it handles great because you can't tell that from that. But what I'm saying is it transfers its weight from one side to the other really quickly. A lot better than the CB500F. Now comparing it again to the CB500F, the suspension on this feels a lot more taut. It feels more set up to handle a set of bends. It feels more set up to have fun on. Whereas the 500, I would say, is uh, designed for commuting. This is designed for going out and having a blast, having fun. Now, it's only a 300cc single cylinder engine, so it's not going to set your world alight. It's not going to blow your face off, but it's peppy. And being a single, it gives it a little bit of character. We're going to do a walk around at some point. When I get down to the bottom of Box Hill at the car park, what I will do is have a little bit of a walk around and to show you guys the instrumentation and the rest of the bike in some detail she goes all right she really goes all right doesn't actually sound like a 300 it sounds much deeper i mean it hasn't got lightning pace but it's got fun pace yes there is such a thing i know it sounds like i make this stuff up but i know what i'm talking about sometimes right now the seat is a little bit hard i have to say that i'm not saying it's uncomfortable i'm just saying it's a bit hard for me maybe because i'm 16 stone or just over 16 stone that i'm compressing it a bit more than it was designed to do because i'm sure this wasn't uh, designed for big guys like me got to be a bit careful on these tires they're brand new there's a little bit of wiggle room in the seat you can go forward a bit and back a bit not a lot it is quite wide so uh, it supports you well 
as I said it's a little bit hard for me some of you might find it okay if you're lighter than me you might find it okay but that's my only criticism of the seat so far and I've only been on the bike for 10-15 minutes but as we all know seats can be remedied quite easily there's plenty of aftermarket stuff that probably will be available for this especially in Europe now that's what I'm guessing this bike is designed for mainly Europe they love a 300cc or 250 so uh, they'll embrace this one I'm not sure how it will sell over here because Honda have shot themselves in the foot a little bit by uh, having the CB500F which is kind of in the same category although riding both I'll say they're not in the same category they are different bikes one's designed for all round ability and uh, everyday use the CB500 and where you can use this for everyday use this one's more fun and uh, some people will look for fun over being sensible I know I do I've tried sensible it didn't work brakes are pretty good on this considering they're brand new they're not quite bedded in yet they've got a little bit of bite that I like they're not too stand you on your nose and they're not too weak they're a nice in between which you would kind of expect for this level of bike do you know what this bike's fun this bike really is fun she sounds lovely this 300cc single engine sounds really nice considering it's got a standard exhaust on it looks like a rocket launcher it's got quite a deep tone is good I'm enjoying this bike and those sort of roads are what this bike is meant for don't sit on the motorway don't just sit on a dual carriageway go and take them around the country lanes and have a laugh that's when small capacity bikes are in their element right what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull into Box Hill car park we're going to have a walk around and I'm going to show you around some of the bits the headlights the wheels the clocks I'll go through the dashboard and everything and uh, let you guys have a little look around so you can make up your own mind of what you think it looks like and I'll give my opinion on some of the stuff on it right so here she is the Honda CB300R brand new for 2018 it's in that cafe neo sports kind of genre that they brought out with the CB1000R the 125 version of this and now this the CB300R and I have to say she's a pretty little bike she's very good looking so let's have a little bit of a look more in detail you know how it works so uh, let's start with the headlights you've got LED turn signals that are permanently on and then a flash obviously when you use them and the front light is LED as well on the 300 that's pretty good it does look nice as well with the little accents and the highlights above and below obviously your top is your normal and then your bottom is your full beam right and at the back you've got an LED tail light and brake light and again LED turn signals right so let's go through the rest of the bike I'll do the wheels the brakes and uh, some other things on it we'll just make it out as we go along as usual you know how these things work right front is a 17 inch wheel back is a 17 inch wheel on the front a 110 70 17 on the back is a 150 let's have a little look uh, yep 150 60 17 on the back brakes are ABS front and rear as is standard in Europe these days uh, nice Nissan caliper on the front and I'm assuming there's one on the back it is Nissan I know it's weird I look but some bikes uh, change them I don't know why they use a budget one on the back and a proper one on the front all right it's got ABS as I said you can tell by this little ring here that's the clue if you're looking for used bikes and you want to know if it's got ABS zoom in on the wheel if it's got one of these little discs on it's ABS it's got these nice forks on it which is uh, they're actually better forks than the CB500 upside down so they're pretty good uh, radiator exciting stuff I know I'll show you all the inside and the, oh the gripping stuff right <laughs> the color I do like the color it's like a candy red with the black bits and the silver it's nice it's like the CB1000 I rode but I have to say that color looked better on the CB1000 because there was more of it it's more substantial and there's more aluminium whereas this is plastic on the CB1000 all that was aluminium right now the engine is a 300 cc single cylinder well it's a little bit less than that so it's actually 286 there and it's pretty good I mean it's not going to set your world alight it's not the fastest engine on the planet 
but it's pretty good and strangely it's smooth it really is smooth i mean you can feel it's a single cylinder but it's not like the old single cylinders where they're just the cylinders just smashing itself into the engine it's really smoothed out whatever they've done to this engine they've done wonders uh, getting it sorted and nice and smooth uh, pegs are just pegs they're standard on all hondas they seem to have the same ones on all the 500s and everything squidgy to take out the vibration they work your feet fit on them what more do you want brake is a brake uh, the frame I like I quite like the frame I quite like the trellis effect I like that I meant to sound more excited when I said that but I like it it's a trellis frame I like that that's quite nice this a bit plasticky the exhaust is a bit of a it's a weird one it's like a rocket launcher I mean you've got this little hole here and all this maybe that's to give it that deep sound so it sounds a little bit better I'm guessing 80%, 90% of people are going to just take that off, chuck it in the garage and stick a nice aftermarket can on there. And I'm guaranteeing this will sound fantastic with an aftermarket can. If you're into a bike that wants to sound brappy and you single cylinder guys know what I'm talking about and you youth know what I'm talking about when I say it's a brap style bike, it's a single cylinder. And the pop you will get from that exhaust if you put an aftermarket one on will be fantastic. Right, while we're moving around this way, I'm going to talk about the worst thing about this bike. And you've probably noticed it by now as I'm walking around. It's the most hideous thing I've ever seen, or one of the most hideous things I've ever seen. And that is this, the rear number plate holder. I mean, look at it. That is ridiculous. The bike ends here, half a wheel, and they stick this on. I would say, because it's bolted on, it's not molded, they know that you're going to take that off and put a decent one on so it looks good. With that removed, this will look a lot more sexy. This will be a really, really good looking bike without that tail section. With this, hideous. That thing's horrible. Get rid of it. Break it and throw it in the bushes. Pillion seat. It's a pillion seat. I can't say how comfortable it is because I'm not a pillion. You'll have to go and sit on one in a shop if you are a pillion, but I wouldn't like to ride for any distance. It's got these little grab handles but it's basically designed for a single person and i don't mean you're not popular and you can't get laid what i mean is uh you're riding alone you might have someone on the back every now and again but that's basically for a tail pack unless you've got a really tiny girlfriend like about that big then you'll be all right rear pegs they're kind of small as i said with the seat i think they want i don't know maybe it's designed to take a baby around on the back i'm not sure but they're, they're dinky i mean even these little tie down spots they're small which kind of goes back to the theme i had before it's like a grown-up grom it's like a race grom that's what i should have called it the race grom <laughs> oh i didn't say it's a single disc on the front not two but you probably saw that when i bent down and had a look at it right let's go for the dashboard let's go through the dash let's sit on the bike and go through the dashboard There you go, it's uh, white numbers on a black background. Right, so let's have a little look and see what's on there. You've got a fuel gauge here, you've got your miles per hour there, and you've got your engine temperature there, rev counter around the outside, and a little clock here. Now it says down here, side stand, that's quite handy. And there it goes, it disappears. It actually does what it says. It's telling you the side stand's down. I don't know why I haven't kicked the side stand up there. It's pretty obvious what it was going to do. Right, let's go through uh, what we've got here. So we'll scroll through. All right, trip A, trip B, hours, minutes, and seconds. I don't understand this. My Honda does this. What's the timer for? Why do you need a timer on a bike? You're not cooking on it. Oh, is that it? You've got trip A, trip B, some kind of timer and uh, just your miles that's it nothing more than that around the outside you've got indicators you've got your petrol warning light you've got your full beam you've got your engine management light you've got your neutral light and you've got your abs light which will go off at five miles an hour this bit in the middle is a shift light it's got a shift light so when you get up around here which is your ultimate revs let's say it tells you to shift so that tells you what this bike is designed for it's designed to hoon around on. It's designed to go out and have a laugh. And guess what? I'm gonna put my jacket back on now. I'm gonna start this thing up and I'm gonna go back out and I'm gonna have a laugh. And I'm gonna tell you more about what I feel about this little bike. Right, before I get back on the bike, I forgot to mention suspension. 
it is adjustable on the back uh, looking like preload only but you'll have to check the specs for that as I said they will be in the descriptions below and on the front they don't look adjustable at all so that's the suspension let's get on and ride right so let's take her back and have a little bit more of a play and I can uh, let you know what I think of the handling do you know what so far I'm liking this sliding around ever so slightly but that's because it's got new tires there's nothing wrong with the suspension it would be nice to take this out with proper bedded in tires so you can really kind of push it through the bends but at the moment I've got to take it just a little bit easy plus if I fall off it cost me a fortune in repair bills so suspension wise pretty good a little bit stiff but that's a good thing it does get a little bit skitty but not on the front end funny enough it's more the back I can feel dancing around rather than the front maybe that's the settings on the shock it's got at the moment you can adjust that as I said before and so that can be dialed out the front though is planted considering it's a light bike it feels really really stable And this is a really, really bumpy road. This is not the smoothest tarmac you'll ever get in your life. This is not a racetrack. This is exactly what this bike was built for. This is a bike built for England. This is so much fun. breaking the speed limit this is a 60 mile an hour road oh that was a big bump hey do you know what the more I ride these little bikes the more I love them everyone thinks it's where the power is Everyone thinks you've got to have power. That's where everything is. Power, power, power. But you know what? It's not. Having a small capacity bike that handles this well is so much fun. Right, so let's get back onto uh, more sensible stuff. The airflow, obviously, I've got some because it's a naked bike. But as I say, with most naked bikes, it's not buffeting at all. It's a natural airflow. So it doesn't feel bad. It actually relaxes you. You get to a certain speed and it pulls your chest up and takes the weight off your wrist, which is nice. Handlebar wise, they're quite a nice width apart. I would like them personally slightly further, but again, this bike is not designed probably for my body shape. Mirrors, they do a job. I mean, I can see mainly my forearms in them. And I know I love my forearms. They are a lovely pair of forearms. I kind of want to see what's behind me more. So I have to tuck my arm in to look behind me. So a couple of uh, mirror extenders on there and that will sort that out. Ergonomically, surprisingly, I fit on here quite well. Although I've said it's small and it's kind of like a 300 grom, I fit on here really, really well. As I said in the beginning, I've got long thigh bones. So my knees are right at the front of this ridge, but they're at the front of the ridge they're not sticking over so they're not on this sharp bit here so actually i fit on the bike quite well i'm not sure how comfortable i'd be for an all-day blast on it but it's a 300 so the chances of me doing an all-day blast on this thing is not likely this is the sort of thing i'll take out for an afternoon and just go mad on i'm really enjoying this bike i really am as you know if you watch any of my reviews or first impressions i enjoy most bikes i see the good things in bikes do you know what i didn't do on a walk around i didn't look under the seat so i'm going to pull over and we're going to have a little look under the seat no one ever looks under the seat but it's quite a handy thing to look at because you might want to stick a sandwich there or i don't know something you might want to stick something there and let's see what something will fit under there I've got weirdos looking at me in the pub now right here's the Oh, that's not bad. You can get a disc lock in there and a sandwich. I don't know why we always say a sandwich. I've never ever taken a sandwich on a bike. You can get something in there. Maybe a sex toy. 
that's under the seat. I've just noticed when you start it up, it says, let's ride. The bike loves you instantly. Do you know what? Once again, I've been shocked by a bike. I was expecting it to be docile, slow. I'm not saying it's a fast bike. You can ride it fast, but it's not a fast bike as in acceleration. It's a nice, easy bike to get on with. Well, it's a Honda. As we know, Hondas are all easy bikes to get on with. It's their ethos, it's the way they're designed. Do you know what shocked me the most about this bike is how it feels on the road, how it handles. It makes you feel better than you are. It's an easy bike to ride quick through the bends. Because it's so light, it's got quite a short wheelbase. I'm guessing only by looking at it, I haven't seen the dimensions, but it feels like it's got a short wheelbase. It really falls into the bends nicely. It kind of flatters your riding style. The more of these small bikes I ride, the more I'm not that interested in bigger bikes. ABS works well, just in case you're wondering. It's a little bit gravelly back there, and I felt the back locking up a bit. But it didn't feel squirrely. It just felt like a nice progressive stop. I, I, I don't know where this bike fits, and I think that's the problem it's got in the UK. We don't know where the 300 sit, because if you've got an A2 license, you can buy a 500. So why would you buy a 300? But having ridden this compared to the 500 Honda, although I'm not going to do the 500 any service by saying this, I prefer this to the CB500. I much prefer this to the CB500. This makes you feel more alive as a rider. The CB500 is a bit, although really good, really fun, it's a little bit dead compared to this. It's more of a commuter, an all-rounder, where this encourages you to get out and be just a little bit silly. Not stupid silly, just a little bit silly. And it gives you confidence. It's a great learning curve. So if you're coming from 125, you get one of these. You can keep this for a few years, hone your craft, get used to the handling of the bike, get used to throwing it into bends. This will flatter you. This will give you a good base to learn on. Learn your craft on a little bike and then move up to a big bike. Too many people step straight up to big bikes and wrap themselves around the first tree they find. That's not the way to enjoy biking. This is a laugh and at the end of the day isn't that what we ride bikes for to make ourselves smile to have a laugh to enjoy ourselves that's what biking's about it's not about plodding all the time it's not about efficiency all the time sometimes you just gotta have a little bit of fun in your life and this little cb300 do you know what it's fun it really is fun i'm gonna end the video here once again thank you to doble motorcycles for letting me ride this bike today so that just leaves me to say don't forget to subscribe to like to share to do all those things that you need to do i shall see you on the next one you know i love you all stay safe fish out get all your bags get out my house i don't want your stuff around i never did you wrong but you did me wrong so go ahead get, go, get gone, gone. Get all your bags, get out my house I don't want your stuff around I never did you wrong But you did me wrong So go ahead and get gone